Hi. How are you? I'm good. It's good. It's been good. a good Ash Wednesday. It sure has. Yeah. So um, on this first uh, Sunday in Lent, we have a, a reading from Mark, which is uh, both challenging and, uh, and there's a sense of urgency with that. So why don't we start with that and then okay. we'll talk about it a little bit. Great. This is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, there's quite a bit in this uh, in this gospel. It's really different from um, what we hear in Matthew and Luke when uh, Jesus is, uh, goes to the wilderness. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed for the first time in, in hearing this is that the spirit is what drove Jesus yeah. out into the uh, wilderness. Um, I just find that fascinating. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, well, and there's some uh, there's some translations that uh, have it in the Greek as uh, thrown into the wilderness. Yeah. So it's a very, um, it's a very aggressive um, kind of action by the Holy Spirit, um, certainly for, for Jesus, but um, the power of that um, action is still quite there. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think what also is interesting about this particular uh, version of this story is that Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days mm. And he was tempted by Satan all during that time. It doesn't yeah. say just at the very end of this yeah. time. Um, and that he was with wild beasts. Yeah. yeah. So he wasn't out there alone, but it was a dangerous place to be. Dangerous place. And of course, you know, with, with scripture all the time, anytime you have those, those numbers in scripture are always right. significant. So 40, so to kind of uh, the exile experience right. of Israel. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, makes me think of it when I, every time I think of temptation is also that what happened to the people, God's people, um, Israel, in the wilderness mm -hmm. is that over time they created idols. And so I think of, of temptations as those things that maybe Satan was tempting Jesus to put things in place of God and in place of the mission that God had given him right. at that time. Yeah. And how his experience, how he came through that uh, experience of 40 days without creating an idol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it also is interesting when I think of, of, of Satan tempting Jesus. When we look at our own lives mm -hmm. and we look at the things that tempt us, but also what if we look at how we've tempted others? Yeah. That's uh, a, yeah, that's excellent. And I, um, you know, I've been thinking about that. Yeah. How have there been times when um, I may have put someone in a position uh, where they might have had to make a choice that they were tempted to make that they may not um, have wanted to make, and yeah. yet there may have been some pressure there to uh, make a decision about something. Yeah, I mean, I think of that when that idea of have I ever in my own life. Um, made someone a means to an end and not treated them with the dignity and as an end in herself. Right. You know, whether that's right. in relationships, whether that's in family dramas, whether mm -hmm. that's at work where, um, you know, you try to promote yourself above, above another person to, right. to move up the career, you know, the career yeah. ladder, um, that it's, it's very easy to reduce people to their use mm -hmm. and not to see their dignity. Right, right. How about the sense of uh, the wild beasts in this? 
Because if we think, uh, even in our day, there are wild beasts all around us. Yeah. Those things that threaten us and that are a danger to us. And they may not be literal uh, sure. wolves and lions, but, but yeah. they certainly are, are dangerous. Well, it's, I'm glad you said it that way, Anne, because it, there's the, the wild beasts um, in, in some Jewish writings, um, demons were referred to as wild beasts. So right. those things that tempt us. Um, so, I, you know, I think of what's w one of the, the, the temptations I think I that I have struggled with and I know um, some other people have is the idea that if I have X or if this happens, then I will finally be fully content. I'll finally be fully happy. I'll finally mm -hmm. be fully healthy. And so this idea of something else other than God that can give me something that only God can give me. Right. And so that's whether once I pay off all my debt or, you know, once I make this amount of money or once I live in this place or once, you know, um, I am have uh, become this person at my company, all of these, all of these things that I may put ahead of um, what actually God is already giving me. Right. And make it, and again, it's idolatry. Idolatry, yeah, right. which I think is, I mean, th this was certainly for the, in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. I think uh, we, I think is the fundamental, um, the fundamental category that we struggle with because right. we, we see the Old Testament, we think, well, I'm not making a giant golden calf right, out of this, right. or I'm not, you know, and then I think of things like American Idol. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You know, absolutely. and it's sort of like the idea is like, it's a good thing. But actually, if I'm not, um, if I'm not aware, and if and if I'm not made aware, particularly in community, of the ways that my focus may be on the wrong thing, um, then I can be um, worshiping the wrong thing. Right, and I see that in our country right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I as a a, a marine, um, you know, I value this country and my relationship to. Uh, the Constitution mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and defending that, and yet when I put my relationship with my country before God, then mm -hmm. patriotism then becomes an idol, which which is very challenging yeah. these days. And it's hard. And I, I I think one of the things you're talking about that's really helpful is that the tricky thing with idols is that uh, an idol becomes an idol when it can't bear the weight of what's being put on it. So there is such a thing as healthy patriotism. Right, absolutely. And there is such a thing as idolatrous patriotism. Yeah. And so sometimes even with idols, we think in very kind of black and white terms mm -hmm. where it's just sometimes it's a matter of degree. Like right. it's, it's not a bad thing to have a house and a roof over your head and income and be able to pay for your food and your car and things like that. Mm -hmm. But to do that um, at the expense of others whose need maybe you're confronted with, um, um, can become a good thing can then become idolatrous right. yeah. and, and and as we think about this particular passage it also talks about that the angels yeah. they took care of Jesus and um, it made me think about who have been the angels particularly during this last year who have mm. who have taken care of me who have mm -hmm. taken care of one another um, how have I been an angel maybe to somebody or how has how have one of you been an angel to, yeah. to somebody during this time? Um, and that it isn't just uh, uh, delegated to heavenly beings, but that we too can be angels of sorts um, to yeah. care for one another when we're in need and when we're tempted yeah. uh, to well, step I in and speak truth. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's the, 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 the power, I think, of angels both angels and then kind of metaphorically what it means for us to is how how have I either been able to or been able to receive uh, a word from God right a message right. from God that yeah. I needed that God has used another person to bring to me mm -hmm. and so um, whether that's to a message to let go of things mm -hmm. a message to let try to let go of control um, Maybe that's a message to um, to grieve, mm -hmm. to lament, yeah. to to actually be able to name those things when someone says, you know, to me, um, 
you know, you seem you seem really sad or you seem really upset or, or you know, that was a strong reaction for something like that. There's something yeah. going on. Yeah. That's an angelic message because it's trying to let God break into that moment with some truth. Right. Um, and I don't always receive that well. Um, and angels are terrifying Absolutely. when they show up they often. Are. And so, yeah. um, but but ultimately, they're the message we get, the angelic, is for our benefit. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we need to hear from God. And that if, and sometimes we need to hear that only because God can in break can break through our deafness. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this conversation. Lovely. It's Thank you. Lovely. Yeah. It's and it's just great. been, it's lovely to have. We had, um, uh, Ann and I were talking about this. Um, we have had uh, uh, folks here from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. We've had right. a lot of uh, prisoners helping. Uh, and we had uh, about 225 um, folks, right. which has been Come amazing. For ashes on a, ashes on a really on a, cold yeah, day. Yeah, it was freezing. In the of um, pandemic. You know, so it was just lovely. And yeah. also, you know, um, uh, just very, uh, very grateful to start our, the season of Lent this way. Absolutely. So. And uh, I want to thank you for joining us today in this conversation and to invite you to join us on Sundays because during uh, mm. Lent, each Sunday, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the Ten Commandments. And so we'll talk about our scriptures each week here on Holy Grounds, those that are um, designated by the lectionary, but we're going to be looking at the commandments. So. Yeah. Uh, if you've always wanted to know something more about the Ten Commandments, please join us on Sunday mornings. Well, thank you again. God bless you, and may you have a holy and blessed Lent. Great. Thanks, Thanks, Stephen. Thank you.